Hello. Good morning. This is uh, Dr. Venkade Pune Christian uh, here. It's on the 5th of July 2020. Looking forward to another Facebook Live session with all of you. Uh, so we have some more time to get started. Let's see what's happening. So I want you all to be very interactive today. Keep commenting, post your questions, like the pages. We need more interaction on this page so that uh, you know we learn from each other and we help each other out. So it's important that we do that. Uh, so today, topics are all general to do with colorectal. Some gastro as well. I, you know, I'll, ha I'll answer as many questions as you want. Uh, Hope the audio is clear. Please, uh, you know, comment back. So we got another five, six minutes to start. Good morning, Anushaya. Good morning, Mr. Kalyan Raman. So I'm just trying to uh, get all this on uh, watch party and uh, also try to do an Instagram today because there are some uh, lots of people on Instagram and uh, you know we need to get more active. Hi Dr. Priya Shanti, how are you? So I want this uh, Sunday morning sh uh, shows to be very interactive so that ask your questions, uh, like the page, comment, uh, let's see if uh, uh, you know we we get more traction so that, uh, you know, it, it needs to be, we need to build this community. So you need to share this with your friends, family, put it on a watch party if you can. Uh, you know, it, it's a, when you see the uh, uh, screen on the right hand corner, you'd say watch video. And if you go click on it, uh, it will go. Uh, open up and. Let's see. Okay, so another few more minutes. Let's see how this is going. And uh, I want to start this watch party. Just give me two minutes and we'll all be ready. Okay, so I think we're ready. Good. So good morning, uh, Mohamed Asga. Excellent. So uh, another three more minutes to start. So uh, so please, uh, if there are any questions, keep uh, asking those questions uh, straight away so that, uh, you know, I'm going to try to answer all most of your questions uh, at the same time. So let's see how things go. Okay. So to start off with, I'm going to discuss about a topic which is not commonly discussed called uh, uh, pilonidal sinus. I don't know how many of you know about pilonidal sinus. It's a, it's a common problem. Uh, so we'll start off with that. Uh, then we can talk about ulcerative colitis because that's been one of the things which uh, people have been asking. Hi, Sony Narpa. Uh, hi, Usha Bal Subramaniam. Hello, Padma Ananda Prasad. Good to see you all. So, uh, so constipation again. One question is already there. So let's get uh, you know a few more minutes. I'll answer this question on constipation. Constipation 
it could be several causes. We will talk about it today uh, for sure. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Sanjeev Bardhan. So good to see you. Uh, hello, Avin Prakash, Mohan Kamal. So uh, we're doing a Facebook. Uh, we're doing Facebook Live. I want to do Instagram as well because a lot of you are Instagram. So let's see if we can get that going. Uh, so bear with me. So. Uh, Okay, so we're almost there. I'm going to start the Instagram live as well. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Venki Mone Krishna again, uh, consultant Kolo Vehicle Surgeon based in Chennai. I'm good to see you all. I hope all of you are staying safe. This is the first time we're doing Facebook as well as Instagram live. I've not done Instagram live before. Uh, but, you know, let's, let's, you know, the more platforms we reach out, the better for all of us so that, you know, we create this community across multiple platforms. Hi Rebecca, uh, Binti, how are you? Uh, hi Shiv Kumar, hi Abdul Majid. So, uh, okay, we are on time. So, uh, hey guys on Instagram and Facebook, uh, it's good to have you all here. So today it's going to be a live question and answer session. Uh, answer, ask the questions in the chat box, like the page, keep commenting. You know, it's very important so that I know what sort of content to put. Uh, in these pages, this is to create more awareness so that most of the times you can have a good lifestyle and a healthy lifestyle so that, uh, you know, we can avoid most of these problems. And if we can, then it's great. Hi, Asif Shavan is a doctor from Bangladesh. It's nice to get, you know, young surgeons, uh, you know, join in because they are the future and uh, we have to, uh, you know, groom them, train them. Uh, welcome to the show. Hello, Mr. Tangaraj. Right. So, Let's get started. It's 11 o'clock. So today is going to be an open question answer session. We've had two, three questions already uh, about uh, constipation and uh, rectocele obstructive defecation. So we'll go through all these things today. Uh, so I'm going to start by talk, uh, talking about uh, uh, pylonidal sinus. Pylonidal sinus, uh, common problem. Uh, as I said, norm, I keep repeating every time that most of the time we only talk about piles which, con which covers, you know, hemorrhoids piles or a fistula or a, uh, or a fissure. So pylonidal sinus is another common problem. Uh, it is different from all of these conditions. It's, it usually involves an infection uh, at the top of your buttock. So, you know, when your buttocks go down like that at the back, top of the buttock, there is a, you know, you get the infection. It basically uh, happens because uh, hair follicles, uh, you know, the, the hair, you know, people who particularly common people have a lot of hair, uh, who they, you know, the hair comes off or drops off and gets collected in that between the two buttocks and drop, you know, blocks the, you know, the hair, uh, you know, follicle sweat glands and that gets infected. Now with that, what happens is you start to get pain, infection, uh, pus collection, uh, it, you know, it, it can be big nuisance. So when you, uh, so it's very common in men than women, more common in people who are very hairy, particularly in that lower area or who have a lot of hair, body hair or hair in the head also, but more common in men compared to women. So that is one. Two, uh, uh, it happens at the top of the buttock normally and it can cause multiple infection spots. So form an abscess which needs to be drained. And then it, if it's persistent and it's a nuisance, the problem is it's between the two buttocks, right? So it, it's in a very awkward area. So when it's in an awkward area, it becomes very difficult to, to uh, for the patient, also a very difficult place to treat. So first thing first, if you have that, you, you know, the, uh, the, the simple things you can do are to, uh, you know, clean that area properly because, you know, you wash all your body and all that, but, you know, in between your two buttocks, it's a crevice. So, you know, things can get stuck in there and, you know, most of us will wash it properly, but some people don't. So you need to apply water, soap and wash between your two buttocks, right? The anus is lower down, but between top of your buttocks, from the lower back to in between your buttocks. And it's very important to keep that area clean because that's where uh, 
Uh, that's where hair collects and these uh, pilonidal sinus and infection forms. So once you keep that area clean, usually it goes away. Again, if you're very hairy, you can shave that area too. Uh, uh, so that's another thing to do. So if you have an abscess that needs to be drained, but if there is usually what happens is there's a, lead, it's a collection, there is a sinus where hair collects and it's chronically inflamed and then you have to open it up, either lay it open or do a plastic procedure uh, to, to remove that infected area and to cover it. So uh, pilonidal sinus, yeah, common in men, uh, hairy people can cause pain, uh, infection. Uh, so the simplest things to keep, uh, keep the hair away, shave. Uh, if you get an infection, you need antibiotics or drain the abscess. And the second thing is, uh, uh, second thing is to, uh, you know, drain the abscess. And if there is sinus, you may need a uh, surgical procedure. So that's spinal sinus. So somebody talked about constipation. Now constipation is very common again, because uh, you know, it, and again, for some people, you can be going to the toilet once in two days, once in three days. That could be normal. It, it, you know, you can. But you know, if it, if your normal is once in one, once a day or once in two days, but if you start to uh, you know change the pattern and you're going once in three days or four days, then it's cause for concern. So then you need to do things to change. One, it could be the diet you're eating. Two, it could be the medications you're taking. Three, you're not drinking enough water. It could be so you need to alter all these things. So again, uh, one of the common things which we come across is uh, thyroid issues. When I mean, you have thyroid issues, uh, lots you know lots of people, even young people, get get thyroid problems, uh, hypothyroidism, particularly low thyroid, hyper too. But most commonly, constipation is uh, uh, connected to hypothyroidism. So it's important to uh, you know check for that. So constipation itself, you know, you need to drink enough water, exercise, as I keep telling you, because it's very common, but people don't follow those instructions. So we need to, uh, you know, do those things and watch your diet, you know, a balanced diet. People try to eat, okay, I'll go on a protein diet. I can go on a, uh, you know, a keto diet. You know, like you, I've tried several of these things and, and uh, you know, this, the, the, the important thing is to have a balanced diet. Drink enough water, take enough protein, take enough carbohydrates. Uh, you know, we are a rice eating population. We've evolved in such a way to change it acutely. Uh, you know, always causes trouble. So have a balanced diet. You know, enough rice, enough uh, protein, uh, carbohydrate, uh, so and fat. So it needs to be a, a good balance with enough water to take in. So, uh, uh, so another question from uh, uh, regarding rectocele rectal prolapse. So, and people putting their fingers to evacuate their rectums. Now, now, uh, what I need to tell you is there is a group of symptoms of, of, of pain in patients, a group of symptoms which are called obstructed defecation syndrome. Basically, it means that you're finding it difficult to evacuate your bowels. It's called obstructed defecation. Now, it could be because the pipe, which is the colon bringing the stool to the rectum, that could be not working properly or the muscles around the anus, they may not be working properly or the muscles around the, uh, in, in the anus may be weak. So it's a combination of different things. So why do people get that? Most likely because prolonged constipation and straining and, uh, 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 and so what happens is the, the rectum, you know, I, I've all told you before, but I'll tell you again, the rectum is about 15 centimeters and the anus is four centimeters. So the motion comes and stores in the rectum. So uh, if if you're not uh, if you're you know your motions are hard and you're not evacuating properly and uh, uh, you know a lot of these people have had childbirth so their muscles are stretched or the nerves are weakened very common in maybe women who had children particularly so your children have to be very thankful to you women because you know the things you 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 do for them including damaging your body when when the children and the babies come out so the muscles could be damaged. So what happens is uh, there's not enough support for the entire pelvic floor, which is, which is the muscles which support the rectum and the anus through which we have to evacuate the motions. They don't support enough. So this rectum starts to stretch. And that's when you get things like the rectal wall gets weak in like the rectal seal, or you try to evacuate or push the rectum, uh, you know, the stool out. And so the entire muscle of the rectal tube starts to come out because the the, the 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 pelvic floor muscles which are 
like a like a diaphragm, like a like uh, like a sling through which the rectum comes. They are weak because they have been damaged because of the childbirth or an accident or whatever, and so the entire rectum will try to come out because there's not enough support. That's when a rectal prolapse happens. So all these things will give you symptoms of uh, you know uh, incomplete evacuation, uh, obstructed defecation, and also seepage because this entire muscle complex is not working properly so that that becomes a complex problem to treat so how do we treat these uh, patients first we have to ascertain what the problem is now if it is a problem of the colon because one it could be because the colon is not working properly as we get age all that can happen second thing which can happen is because uh, you know with the medications you take the gut just doesn't work properly or with diabetes the new, you can get a neuropathy which when the, with the, the nerves are not working properly so so you can get a uh, a, a slow transit constipation as we call it because the colon is not being effective so when the, that happens uh, you know the colon could be the problem so if you go do something around the anus to sort this problem but the colon is not working properly then the problem will still be there so we have tests to see how how effective uh, we can put uh, you know some dye or we can put a, uh, a metallic balls to see how soon the stool comes out you know once you ingest it uh, there are markers special markers which you can use so those are called slow transit constipation tests uh, uh, so you can do those tests to see if the colon is working properly so then the next is to look at look at the rectum itself you look inside with a tube like a colonoscopy or a sigmoidoscopy to assess the rectum if there's any problem inflammation then you can do something like a defecogram. Defecogram, you can do it with, with some just some putting some dye and taking some x-rays or you can use an MRI scan to do that. That will show a rectal seal nicely or if the whole pelvic floor is descending. So, or there is a weakness. Sometimes these things ha happen as a complex because the pelvic floor is like a sling. You know, when the baby is coming out, the entire muscle uh, complex and the nerves are stretched. So to, you know through these muscles, the rectum comes out, the the vagina, you, the, right, the vagina comes out, and the and the uh, bladder and the urethra come out. So if you are straining and 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 pushing these things out, and if the muscles are weak, all of these things can descend. So these are a complex, uh, you know, uh, can cause incontinence, urinary incontinence, you know, uh, or anal incontinence. So or obstructed defecation so it's a very complicated area but it's we, we can assess what this problem is uh, through the test which i've told you the tefecogram you can also do a manometry to assess the pressures of the muscles and the rectum so all these tests will give you an and also an anal ultrasound and an anal ultrasound is a uh, a special test where we put a ultrasound probe into the anus to assess the muscle complex how if they still intact because they can get damaged uh, uh, during childbirth and, and, and that's a very special test so uh, we do have it in our clinic at, at, in, in, at, at, uh, at the clinic and at the hospital so uh, it's a very special test as I said so it's useful to assess the uh, the, the, the uh, integrity of the um, the anal muscles particularly uh, it's important to assess these muscles post childbirth uh, maybe three or four months I think uh, in the UK and the US uh, or in the western uh, countries there uh, routinely there is an assessment done of these women post pregnancy of all women post pregnancy to see uh, if any damage is done to these muscles uh, because 30 percent of these women will have some damage to mus to the muscles and the nerves so it's important to assess it maybe a three or four months time so that's uh, the, these are all so most of these uh, pelvic flow problems are managed with uh, you know obstructive difficulty with you know uh, with some medication some uh, pelvic floor exercise biofeedback which is a uh, biofeedback is interesting because you you uh, test the how the muscles work and you teach retrain the muscles so most of it is uh, you know physiotherapy and retraining and most of the time it should settle and if not there are some special surgery which is advice and that's the next stage okay so let's look at what other questions are coming up so, uh, any uh, patient already going through colon surgery for, yeah, so we are starting to uh, open up and do his elective. To, uh, this week we have uh, uh, lots of cancer surgery coming up. Uh, the elective surgeries are slowly restarting. Now we know how this COVID behaves. The important thing is to wear a mask, 
maintain social distancing, wear a, wear a face shield if required, stay away. Where you're going to contract the virus is in an environment where you, there are patients who are not wearing masks, who are coughing and you're in constant, say 45 minutes or an hour, you know, that sort of prolonged exposure. If you are seeing patients and if you are, you know, in a, even in a hospital, if you are maintaining the distance, wearing all these precautions and, you know, you, you, you socially distance and that's what we do in all our clinics, hospitals, there is absolutely, uh, you know, nothing to worry about because this is going to, this is how it's going to be until we have a proper vaccine and, you know, uh, we, we, and this virus settles them. So as long as you take the precautions, it's fairly safe to visit the hospitals. There are COVID uh, hospitals separately now, so you don't need to worry. Most of the hospitals which are, you know, and even in the co hospitals where there is COVID treatment, there is a separate area. So that area, there is a separate doctor, special uh, 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 protocol. So I don't think, uh, you know, we need to worry about nothing. Now we have a better idea how to manage these things. Okay, so uh, fistulas. Okay, any fistulas are very common and they can be a nuisance. So in the anal, in the if you know, in the anus there are three main problems. As I told, I've told you before. One is anal fissure, most very common, which is a tear. Hemorrhoids or piles, which are like these are cushions which bleed and 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 uh, and uh, and uh, cause lumps. Uh, but you can change medical. Uh, sorry, you can change your lifestyles. Give some medicine. Use them. But anal fistula is an infection of an anal gland. All of us having have some anal glands in the anus. And these glands lubricate the motion. We don't know why they are, but we think that's what it does. So, uh, so what happens is these glands can get infected. Now, if you say, inf uh, you know, we, we, as I said, we don't know why they get infected, but they do get infected. It's like a, having a pimple in the wrong place, if you, you know, putting it simply. So, uh, hi Pritam Nyog, hi Mohammad Iqbal, hi, hi Tony Lobo, hi Suhel. Uh, hi Aditya Agarwal, hi Ravi, uh, so um, coming back to fistula, so the, uh, so you have a gland infection which, uh, which becomes an abscess, the problem with that is, so it, imagine this is the anal tube, these are glands inside it and if you burst inside the anal canal it just comes out and it's okay, but the problem with the anal uh, in fact fistula is the, the glands burst through the muscles, there are two muscles which control your motion. They burst through the muscles, or and and they, and they form an abscess. Now, you you know what happens is one it may settle on itself, or you go see a doctor. They, they put in some antibiotics, but it fifty percent of the time it can just keep crumbling on. Okay, so if you drain an abscess, fifty percent of the time it will go away. Fifty percent of the time it will develop into a fistula. So the abscess which forms in in, in the anal glands comes and pops through the muscles and comes to the surface and bursts. When it connects between the anal, anus and the skin outside around the anus, it, it is called a fistula. If it doesn't, if it's just an abscess, which is then it's a, it's a perianal abscess, you know, if you don't have a connection to the skin outside. So as far as I'm concerned, as a colorectal surgeon, the anal fistula is the most complex problem I treat, complex. Sometimes I find it more challenging than cancer because the, these are infections around the anal muscles which are very important for control we just can't cut everything open because you will lose control so it's very important to uh, you know if you have an infection to treat it very quickly and if it's an abscess drain it very quickly and if it's a fistula get it treated as soon as possible because these abscesses uh, or fistulas will you know abscesses will come and pop out as a fistula then if the external wound will heal up and again after a few weeks or months it will pop again or it may open another branch and like a little root. So it's very important as far as anal fistula is concerned the treatment is going to be only surgery. Okay. Is there any way of avoiding it? No. It's got nothing to do with uh, you know your diet, your life, nothing. It's just bad luck. And so if you have a fistula we need to have surgery to treat it. Now surgery becomes complicated because as I said these this track or the root comes and bursts through the anal muscles with control your motion. Now, the problem with that is we just can't go and cut this. You need to be very careful to open the uh, track and lay it open so that it doesn't damage the muscle. Now, it, it, if it's a, usually it's a simple fistula, you can 
laid open and it's a day procedure and problem is solved. Sometimes it's a complex system and a lot of times I also see that pa patients ignore it because you know they're embarrassed, they don't want, they're worried, they, 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 they're scared and they ignore. Uh, but it forms multiple roots and you know it can form a complex fistula and that becomes a big challenge to treat. You may need one stage, two stage, three stage, you may need to put a seat on like a rubber sling to drain the infection and 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 it and, and it's 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 a nuisance, but it can be safely treated. Uh, you know, uh, but you know, but people need to be patient with the fistula. Okay, so anal fistula treatment is surgery. It can be complex because it involves the muscles which control your motion. So patience is important. You need to trust your surgeon. You need to find a good surgeon who does lots of these procedures uh, 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 routinely. So so it's important to. Uh, uh, you know, find a good surgeon and also get it treated very quickly. All right. So that's for anal fistula. So there's a question that says, uh, so these anal problems don't cause cancer. Uh, so that's not to be worried. So uh, what else are we asking? Any other questions? Keep keep your questions coming in. Uh, hello, Vimala. Hello, Anuradha. Hello, Arun Bhupati. Hello, Philomena. Hello, Kavina. Okay, so what else are we? So the next thing which we can uh, we can also talk about uh, is ulcerative colitis. So uh, people have asked me several times now. Uh, you know, we we spoke about inflammatory bowel disease when we were speaking to Shiny last week with the diet, the nutrition, sports nutritionist. That is inflammatory bowel syndrome, which is nothing organically wrong, but you know, it's very sensitive gut. But inflammatory bowel disease is a complex problem and it's uh, it's a it can be a serious problem so inflammatory bowel disease has two important conditions in in that spectrum one is ulcerative colitis the other is crohn's disease now crohn's disease is is the more complicated one of the lot so crohn's disease can affect anywhere between the mouth to the anus ulcerative colitis mostly affects or uh, it will affect mostly the colon and the rectum okay so that's the big difference so let, let's talk about ulcerative colitis today so ulcerative colitis uh, is basically inflammation of the colon okay the inner lining of the colon gets inflamed now it can it can uh, affect uh, both men and women it can affect any age group but most common in younger people uh, it's it's very common in the western world but uh, uh, a rising trend is seen in uh, in developing world, particularly in India, and it's very common up north uh, as well. We are also seeing a rise in, uh, you know, uh, ulcerative colitis across the country and in the subcontinent. Uh, there has been some relation to as we get cleaner and not exposed to, uh, you know, the uh, different uh, bacteria and, you know, cleanliness has been associated. There's some uh, uh, paper, papers which suggest that. The other reason could be uh, infections. It could be viral infections. It could be bacterial infections. Uh, can cause uh, you know inflammation of the colon uh, and colitis. Uh, it could uh, it could be sometimes drugs can cause uh, the medications you take can cause colitis. Uh, basically, what is the underlying to the, is, so when you have a infection or inflammation, uh, sorry, in infection or a uh, or, or, or a something which attacks the body, the body provides an immune response. Now, when there is an hyperinflated immune response, then uh, you know, then you start to have inflammation, and that's what happens in, in the ulcerative colitis too. So, what happens is this this inflammatory response stays or persists even after the initial insult is gone. So, what happens is. Uh, uh, this inflammation uh, the, the, of the colon persists, so body is still showing a uh, the uh, hyperinflated response to to this, and it persists even when the 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 the, the, the attacking agent is not there, and it, and so that becomes a problem. So what common symptoms you would see are one is uh, diarrhea, very common, and then blood mixed in stool. Um, that is also uh, another you know. Uh, uh, symptom, uh, bloating, uh, weight loss. Um, so those are the common symptoms with colitis. Okay. Now ulcerative colitis can also affect not only the colon; it can affect other. It can affect uh, the eye. It can attack 
attack the uh, you know the joints uh, it can attack it, it can affect the skin so there are several manifestations of ulcerative colitis but usually happens when you have it for a very long period of time uh, you know for years together and as the length of inflammation of ulcerative colitis you know you've had it for 5 years 10 years then you can you can and if it's not controlled well you can have skin changes you can have arthritis you can have uveitis so there there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, a a, a uh, uh, multiple in manifestations of ulcerative colitis. Okay, so the next thing is to uh, uh, we're talking about is uh, what as we talked about sign uh, symptoms. We we what are the other signs you can see the ulcerative colitis? Now uh, the other thing to remember is if you had it for more than ten years, right? If you had it for more than ten years. There is a risk of colorectal cancer. The risk is about one percent, and have you for twenty years, and goes up to ten percent. You know, so so it's important to be screened and you to have have it treated. So ulcerative colitis is is one you know it can cause colorectal cancer. So that is why you should get screened. Okay. So the treatment is usually is to first you see a doctor to get examined to see if it is a something simple. Most common uh, test they would do is to after doing a good rectal examination and confirming that nothing. In the anus, the next thing is to do a colonoscopy. The colonoscopy is the gold standard test for assessing the colon, and then you will do some biopsies, make sure there's no tumor and things like that at the same time. And then the inflammation will con the biopsy will confirm whether it is ulcerative colitis. The important thing to differentiate from Crohn's disease with, with the biopsies, you can tell that. And and so the, the the colitis can affect the entire colon, and it's like a pan colitis. Or it can it can cause it can be very uh, severely affecting the patient with lots of uh, diarrhea, fever, uh, and you know feeling very unwell. It's called fulminant colitis. And when you need acutely need uh, treatment with hospital admission, all that. Most of the time, uh, there is inflammation, and you can treat it medically as an outpatient. So the mainstay of treatment again is medications. First, we need to confirm the diagnosis. So it's not a blind just treatment. And once you confirm and, and, and confirm the diagnosis, then it's jointly managed by medical and surgical gastroenterologists, mostly by medical gastroenterologists, who will uh, who will look at the biopsies, the reports, and all that, and treat you with medicines. So uh, you know you don't need to know the you know uh, five ASA compounds, and you know some, there are some immunomodulators, there are some uh, uh, biologicals. These are all you know different uh, medications based on how bad the uh, uh, the uh, condition is but important thing to remember is medications work very nicely and we can control and get a remission for colitis okay uh, so the important thing is to know that that the medication uh, works well now if if the medications don't work and patient gets sick or there's lots of diarrhea there is still bleeding where you know where there's weight loss anemia is a common thing you know pa pa patients are not feeling well then they may be referred to uh, 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 um, um, they may be referred to a surgeon for uh, further treatment so at, at, at surgery we need to see a surgeon a surgical assessment that's what I would do I'll see if uh, uh, if this we the medical treatment has been fully exhausted and then for surgically we need to see if we can uh, there are several ways we can uh, for uh, you know if this inflammation is very acute and you know patient is sick then we just remove the bit of the colon the whole colon leave the rectum alone so that the inflammation settles and then we can form a pouch and you know so so the treatment primarily for if it's if you go to the surgery is uh, Acute treatment, or uh, you know, as a elective treatment, acute you have to take an emergency colon out, and then at a later stage join it back together. As a planned procedure, you have to take the entire colon and rectum out. That is the only treatment. So, and then a lot of people you end up with a bag like an oilostomy bag. But in the last uh, few decades, we've they have uh, two to three decades they've they've uh, brought in a beautiful uh, operation called a pouch J pouch operation, which replaces the entire colon so you could get the normal you know you could have normal sort of close to normal sort of continence with you know uh, what we call pulp surgery which we routinely perform at the Apollo Main Hospital 
uh, and uh, you know we now we can do robotics laparoscopy to to uh, to do the pouch surgery so that is ulcerative colitis so there's a good question from uh, my good friends uh, uh, sonal malhotra which asked who's asking question about we see a lot of kids going through issues of constipation other gut related problems because of emotional issues how do you treat this uh, uh our medicines and our counseling is needed very good question because uh you know compared to my generation you know uh, uh i am getting old i'm you know i'm from 48 this year uh, uh uh when we were like you know when we were playing uh, you know we we were out in the fields or you know in a playground uh, these days kids don't have because one we don't have that many playgrounds because we you know particularly in the cities uh, two uh, you know we don't uh, go and uh, most of it is done online phone chat Uh, the way people children interact has changed most it's become online the communication ways have changed and that has an effect and you know and that has an effect on on, on the emotional well being that has an effect on you know and increase the anxiety uh, because you know uh, uh, human interaction talking to one another so you have uh, you talk you you observe them people directly uh, you you eye contact directly uh, you know uh, Uh, and I, i think that has a big effect on you know how people uh, you know uh, behave and 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 their well being so that interaction is slowly going away in this generation because you know they're doing it more on phones online and you know and and you know and, and emojis and so, so what happens is the 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 real human connection interaction is missing and that will have an effect on 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 how children of this generation grow and their emotional well being and you know uh, so if you if you fight you know in our generation uh, if you, if you fight we'll make up you know we'll you know we will have to get on you know and there are lots of things so suppose you have to use the phone you know we have to find a time when everybody is sleep or quiet that's how we used to be you know in those old phones which we the wired phones I, I, i'm sure most of you remember but these days it's all you know wire your phones on your hand and you know you can send and you can send emojis and you know if people talk you know just emoji will say like you're pissed off or you know angry or what not i i don't think it expresses the actual uh, it may but you know maybe our generation is not very good at it but i personally think that uh, you know it it does increase the anxiety levels uh, the the less of the human interaction and you know hanging or playing in the playground or you know spending summers with, with, with your local group all that uh, has changed so and that anxiety reflects on your gut that's where people get uh, more we see more ibs in in children this generation these uh, in in in, uh, uh, in in this generation uh, so we need to talk to them they need to talk to us so it is it is difficult i have a teenager at home so i i know and uh, but you know i'm sure they will get around it and uh, you know we just need to uh, you know i'm guilty of not reaching out often because you know i'm like i don't understand it most of the time i think but i think it as adults we have to reach out to them you know and keep that interaction that's what i've learned or i you know what i want to do uh, is to reach out to your children because it's important to create that interaction because that has an effect and you know i see a lot of ibs related symptoms patient you know constipation diarrhea uh, you know uh, uh, which which gets aggravated so i think that's very important good point uh, to raise so uh so neeraj shada uh, okay uh, hello there's a question saying there is something uh, i think uh, if there is a lump or you know issue there i think the important thing is to get to see a doctor or a specialist who deals with this let them ex- do the examination because it could be anything depending on your age uh, we need to do a good rectal examination uh, and then uh, and, and then if required there is a short colonoscopy Uh, which is a very simple test so i don't think you need to fear at all because or oh, you can have some sedation for it so uh, you know don't uh, don't uh, you know uh, be anxious about a test because there are lots of ways we can do it so it's important is to understand and i'm very happy that you you know you understand that you need a test to you know assess it a, a good uh, a doctor who will assess it do a good rectal examination that will give most of the information then a test will depend on whether you need it or not uh vinay kumar so pilonidal sinus there are several procedures surgically uh important if there's an abscess you can drain it you can excise it and if it's a big uh wide area which is infected then you have to do a flap procedure 
Uh, so that's a simple um, insurance covered is there for uh, you know, almost all procedures now for colorectal problems and gastro problems. So I don't think that's an issue. Um, any bleeding if a patient has fistula? Yeah, you know, uh, because the, the inflamed tract can keep, uh, you know, uh, uh, getting infected again and can be discharging pus and, and blood. So that's very common. Uh, so there is James asking something about uh, uh, after uh, anal surgery, the anal and the um, anal orifices become small. So he's asking a Tamil, so I'm going to answer answer in, Tam in Tamil. So James in the uh, operation kaparma suringitsna sometimes uh, anal uh, stricture and vanga the irrigitsna ka the usual other ointment put sari pan try pan la elati anal dilator and under ka the surgeon surgeon apart confirm panite first uh, panitanga upon the anal dilators pan uh, use pan ka just to stretch agon adu me elati chin operation teva padalam but uh, you know get it checked with the specialist. Uh, Okay, uh, so uh, there is a question, stoma, so uh, about stoma, stoma again is a uh, big uh, area, uh, stoma uh, is a uh, where the bowel comes to the surface of the abdomen, we do, one, you can have a permanent stoma or from a small intestine, sometimes in ulcerative colitis surgery uh, or you can have it as a temporary stoma post uh, uh, cancer surgery. We do that often after low rectal cancer surgery. Um, uh, that's a temporary one. Uh, but so just remember if particularly if you're doing it for rectal cancer surgery, the whole rectum is replaced you probably have radiation. So when you join it back, whatever we do, 70% of the patients will have symptoms when, when you join the re-establish the, uh, the connection. Uh, it's called a low anterior resection syndrome, large syndrome. 70% will have it. Uh, 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 70% will have it, so we have to educate the patient, but that's so, whether, you know, have, most of the patients would rather have a normal route of defecation or, you know, uh, using the normal route, so that's a compromise. Uh, so, it, majority of people will be okay, but lots of people have symptoms, uh, you know, they have to use the stool three or four, toilet three or four times, but control will be there. So, Mr. Dalang has brought up that question, lost a friend to rectal cancer, he was only 27, this misdiagnosis, a lack of awareness, absolutely right. Uh, so, as I said, uh, the anal problems, you know, hemorrhoids, piles, fistula, uh, fissure, all these, these common symptoms are rectal bleeding, anal pain, change in bowel, abdominal constipation. These are the common symptoms of colorectal cancer too. So, if these symptoms don't settle for six weeks you need to have it checked see a doctor and it's very important every time every time we we, we join this community to have a chat i think that's one of the things which uh, uh, we need to uh, remind ourselves remind our family remind our friends is to you know get screened it's important you know we we seeing colorectal cancer in younger people so you know it's it's important to uh, 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 you know to have that awareness uh, and also if you're 50 plus, that's what the U in the US they're doing, in India, 60 is okay, you should get screened too. All right, okay, so, uh, hi, Hakanyana. Okay, so, okay, what else, what else questions are we talking about? Uh, okay, uh, so, uh, any other questions, please keep typing in. Uh, hello, Say Shambal Ramchandran. Hello, Amita. Hello, Rumana Rahman. So, so please like the page, uh, comment, uh, you know, interact and, uh, you know, post what sort of uh, content you want to, you know, you like on the page. It's because, you know, we, we want to, uh, we want to, uh, you know, uh, be interactive. We want to create content which is useful for all of you so that uh, I'm trying to create content about anal fistula, fissure, fistula, uh, hemorrhoids, color in, in different languages. Uh, in some of the languages I wouldn't know, but I'm going to get a voiceover so that, you know, uh, you know, uh, Bangla, I want to learn to speak Bangla someday because I have lots of friends, uh, from, uh, from, um, 
Bangladesh. Um, so there's a question of how many days take to cure the surgical wound. So usually the wound, you know, because we're using minimally invasive surgery like laparoscopy and robotics these days, the wounds are very small. Uh, patients are discharged within three, four days. Uh, the wounds are at, you know, are probably healed by about a week. So they can have a shower, you know, soon after. So uh, uh, I, I think uh, that's that's not a major problem. Hi, Sir John. How are you? Uh, so good question. Colonoscopy while doing my health checkup once a year. Yeah. So if you're 50 plus and uh, you know, and if there is family history of colorectal uh, cancer, uh, or if you have symptoms, if you have symptoms for more than six weeks of rectal bleeding, change in bowel habit, you should have it done. If you are 50 plus and there's family history, uh, have it done. Uh, if there is a family history, say some, you know, someone in the family, say uh, someone X, their mother had cancer when they were 50 years old, then the, the mother or father, for example, the children are at risk, the mother or father, their brothers and sisters are at risk, so they should get screened, the children should get screened. So if the mother or father got the cancer at 50 years old, then, you know, they the, the children should get screened at about 40 years because colorectal cancer develops from polyps. So the polyps are benign things which develop in the lining of the colon. That's why colonoscopy is very effective in preventing cancer because if you find polyps, you can remove it through colonoscopy. So if you uh, uh, remove the uh, uh, polyps or burn them, then you're done with. So it takes about 10 years to develop from polyps to cancer. So if you do a colonoscopy, that's what the thinking is. So if somebody in the family is at 50, then the children, brothers, sorry, particular children should have it done or the screening done 10 years before. So, what, I mean, you're 40. So, uh, so that's, so, but if there's someone in the family who's at colorectal cancer at whatever age, uh, say 50, the children are fine. They're, they're only 20, 30, but they have symptoms. They should get screened. Yeah. So I hope I've answered that question. So to answer your question, when you're having a master health checkup, if you're 50 plus 50, uh, or you have a colonoscopy, if it's normal, then you need colonoscopy every five years. Okay, great. I hope that answers that. So there's another question from Mother Mita Ghosh. Uh, Mother, through uh, two operations of piles, we're still having some problems. She's 65. So the important question to answer is uh, if has, has uh, you know, mother has had a colonoscopy because it's important or, uh, you know, somebody Anybody over the age of, you know, are we, anybody coming with symptoms, we do a rectal examination, make sure everything's okay. We at least do a sigmoidoscopy because you're finding young people with colorectal cancer. The important thing to remember is most of the cancers are left-sided. So that is within 80 centimeters from the anal edge. So you can re do a short colonoscopy and reach it. So you don't need to do a full colonoscopy, at least, particularly in young people. And if there is a anal problem, then I just do a sigmoid to, to make sure there's nothing else there. But if you're older, uh, you should have a full colonoscopy. So to answer your question, Madhu Mehta, that if mom has had two operations and still there's some bleeding, one, to make sure that the colonoscopy is done because she's 65 and then get a recheck because usually two operations, five operations are really well done well. They usually settle down beautifully. Yeah. So the thing about colorectal surgery is if you, majority of the time you've done well, problems go away. You know, yes, we do have recurrences and complications, you know, you know, uh, uh, I do have them too, uh, because, you know, as my boss used to say, and my good mentor, Professor Stephen Rexner from the Cleveland Clinic, Florida, will say, and will, will has, does propagate that if you do enough surgery, you should have complications. If any surgeon says, we, I never have complications, the truth is, well, it's not true. Second, they're not doing enough operations, if that makes sense. It's important because if you do enough volumes, you will have complications, but it will be very far and few. Uh, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Hello, Sajal Daidnath from Bangladesh. How are you? Uh, I miss Bangladesh. I haven't been there for a long time. I hope this lockdown finishes so that we can visit there. Uh, so the question about fissure. Fissures are common. Uh, you know, they, they normally, if you pick it up early and treat it with these special ointments, uh, Usually they settle down, but if every time you have a hard motion and uh, 
you know the pain or irritation comes then the fissure hasn't healed properly so the important thing is to check if the fissure is is chronic uh, then you may need surgery because the sphincterotomy is the gold standard operation for that gives the best results there are other things which you can do botox yes you can do botox uh, for a fissure uh, we i particularly prefer them in young women because we don't want to cut muscle and you know do this operation although it's a very safe operation uh, it can be used for men as too so yeah we need to see if the fissure is healed that's what the issue so there is a question from usha bala subramaniam uh so tiny boils in the awkward place there is no other thing yeah so the, these can be boils around the anus there will be two causes most com you know it could be a fistula which is you know the infection which is we were talking about which is popping up again and again if it's in the same place but people can also get a folliculitis which is inflammation around uh, the anus or or on the buttock you know where these uh, sweat glands or hair follicles can get infected and uh, that can also cause these boils so we need to assess it to see what type of uh, uh, boils they are and uh, treat them appropriately so again uh, there is a question from uh, regarding that uh, lump so i think the simplest thing would be to get to a specialist to have a look at it confirm that what the problem is and then we can decide whether i know you're uh, anxious about uh, uh mr chadha about uh, a colonoscopy and sigmoidoscopy uh, or who you are asking about uh, so the simplest thing would be to assess what the problem is because you know then we can decide uh, what alternative test can be done okay so uh, we are another 20 15 minutes to go so if there are any questions keep keep them coming because it's important to uh, uh you know uh, keep asking those questions uh Okay. Uh, then, if you have the time, please like the page. Uh, do tell me what sort of content you want, uh, and then uh, uh, we can look. We can add them uh, on the different platforms. So, let's talk a little bit about uh, rectal prolapse because we were talking about it earlier. So, rectal prolapse uh, is a. Uh, it's very interesting because where I trained in colorectal surgery in the UK, most of the rectal prolapse where I, which I saw. was an older women uh, who most as we discussed have had uh, injury to the pelvic floor because of childbirth uh, multiple uh, uh, pregnancies uh, or, or uh, had a uh, you know uh, an episiotomy where they cut the muscle to deliver the baby or you they've used uh, uh, forceps because that's when these muscles get damaged so i always saw them uh, in the in the uk when i was training in old women particularly in the 70s and 80s uh and so uh, if they were fit we did a abdominal procedure if they were not fit we did a uh a perianal procedure called a delomps procedure uh so it was very simple you know you could do it under spinal anesthesia and so on but in india we are seeing uh, or in the subcontinent we are seeing it in young women the 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 we seeing it in old women also particular but again let's talk about the older women i'll tell you uh patients don't seek out because they embarrass i think we as a community need to talk to them because it i'm sure there are lots of people who get to prolapse they are embarrassed to talk about it i hope uh, that all of you would talk to your families and friends create some awareness the rectal prolapse when the whole rectum comes out it's like a lump coming out uh, it is it is a very uncomfortable thing it causes incontinence it's very embarrassing Pati- patients will you know don't know what to do they might go to a gynecologist i hope they do and they will get them diagnosed ideally you should see a specialist who deals with this uh, ideally a colorectal surgeon or or a, a special or, or a surgeon who deals with a lot of these things because it may not be visible it will be only uh, obvious when they strain in the toilet and the lump comes out and then you have to push it back in that's what the common symptom is when the rectum comes out as a lump it will be small like a little pear and then it becomes like a big apple and then then a, you know banana which comes out and then it has to be pushed back and sometimes it gets blocked outside and it gets swollen can be very uncomfortable so the important thing is that uh you know that that patients need to seek out that, that they are very embarrassed particularly even the men and women uh, so in 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 particularly in my in our city in chennai uh, in my practice i'm not seeing 
the women I'm not sure why I do see some women but I'm not seeing lots of women uh, it, you know uh, that's very interesting uh, but I do see lots of men particularly from the north northeast Bangladesh uh, you know that belt particularly with rectal prolapse and it's and I think that's a, a, a tissue uh, weakness uh, of the tissues of the pelvic floor and because it's very unusual to have a rectal prolapse when you're young and I, I've seen uh, you know uh, children with uh, rectal prolapse have seen young men with you know from you know between uh, 10 to uh, 20 25 lots of the most of them are in that age group which is very interesting uh, so we do a, a robotic ventral rectopexy procedure which works very beautifully for them in women I try to not to do that because putting a mesh is not a great you know there are some issues around the world with that putting a mesh between the vagina and uh, I can hold so what we do for rectal prolapse is basically what you're trying to do is to the rectum is prolapsing out and causing the symptoms you need to you know pull this or hike this rectum back into the abdomen and fix it to a point so that it doesn't come out right so if you are very unfit we do a perineal procedure through the anus if you're fit we do a keyhole procedure through robotics these days and fix it sometimes the mesh sometimes with sutures so that it doesn't come out so that's what we do it's called rectopexy procedure works beautifully and uh, we do quite a bit of those procedures. Uh, so that's uh, rectal prolapse, but important thing, create awareness because, uh, you know, I'm sure there are lots of uh, uh, men and women, particularly women, older women who are embarrassed to talk about uh, colorectal problems. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's important, particularly rectal prolapse, you know, it's important that we, uh, uh, the reason why I keep, you know, uh, doing this engagement every Sunday with all of you is somebody needs to create a momentum, create this awareness so that, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's nothing embarrassing to talk about these problems. We should talk about it because it's like any medical issue we can have because colorectal, you know, I, I get often, uh, I asked often, doc, why do you do colorectal surgery? You know, how do you, don't you find an embarrassment? No, it is like the heart. It's another organ. It's another, you know, uh, a part of the body which gets medical issues and it, it may be embarrassing for the patient quite rightly but you know as a medical professional I uh, you know this is what I enjoy doing I love doing I had great mentors who, who uh, you know so the answer to the question why I picked one of the first surgeons I worked for uh, was a colorectal surgeon Mr. Neil Keeling uh, from uh, Bury Edmonds in, in Suffolk County in the UK so he inspired me and you know I it covers abdominal surgery and uh, you know, colorectal problems, which we can really make a difference for 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 patients and and and, and uh, families. So that's why I love doing colorectal surgery. So the important thing is to create the awareness, uh, keep talking about it uh, because it's you know yeah it could be initially embarrassing, but it's important because we can really help a lot of people. It's important you know keep talking to the community, to your friends, family, uh, you know, and and I think uh, particularly the women because you know. If we empower the women to come in order and speak, I can. I think we can really help them. Okay, so looking at uh, so there's a question again. How long does the polyp take uh, to turn to cancer? I told I already told you about about ten years roughly. So that's why you can if you get screening for colonoscopy, if you find a polyp, if you can remove it, then uh, you know uh, the <clears throat> the risk is removed. Uh, okay, uh, so there's somebody. Asking a question about waft. Waft is a mic uh, endoscopic technique for uh, 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 anal fistula surgery. I've used it. It was very popular a few years ago. Uh, it is basically trying because you know, as I said, the fistula comes through the muscles. Any any technique which you can avoid cutting the muscle, uh, you know, so that there's no risk of you know continence issues. Uh, we were we, we are trying out. There are so there is no gold standard treatment or technique for fistula what that means is that no one particular technique is great so that is what the complexity of fistula uh, problem is so uh, the waft is uh, i've used it i've i've seen a lot of recurrences with it so uh, so i don't use it anymore uh, so to answer your question i think uh, if there is continuous discharge and it's uh, is that you will need another mri scan to see where the, uh, the, the you know reascertain the fistula the current state and then you will need uh, you know, lay opening the fistula with the seton. Uh, uh, you can try a lift procedure. I've done it a few times. It has worked. But in my hands, the gold standard is to lay open 
uh, fistula track and leave a seat on and, and do remote uh, you know, two-stage procedures, what, what I do for a complex fistula and works very well. So again, it depends on each surgeon, you know, uh, as long as we maintain the continence and we get uh, reasonably good results, there is a failure rate of 5-7% to 7 in fistula surgery, that's acceptable. Uh, that is, ex I mean, it may be not acceptable to the patient, but it's acceptable uh, with published data. So we have to be, uh, we have to accept that, you know, as doctors and surgeons, uh, you know, there is no operation which is 100%. How is that? Yeah. There's no operation which is 100%. There is always a risk of recurrence, failures, and we have to accept that, you know, and it may, it may vary, uh, you know, between 1% to 5% to 7%, but, you know, if, uh, you know, that, you know, we all as a group have to understand that surgical failure is a possibility and it, 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 it may be happen in a small group of people, not in a majority, so that is important. So, but that may, that discussion needs to come with the doctor and surgeon. It's very important to know that and it's a good point to discuss too. Uh, sorry, uh, Muhammad Iqbal, ask your question again, I can't understand walking earlier, what that means is. Uh, so there's another question, uh, two months, uh, uh, so uh, there's a question saying, fissure surgery two months ago, biopsy was in his over, okay, but hasn't healed. So normally, so, uh, you know, things, uh, inner fissures, surgery, it's a very good operation, uh, should heal up within two months. If it doesn't, there may be some local infection. Uh, so you need to go back and get it examined, uh, reassess to see what that problem is. Uh, you know, sometimes you can have a little abscess there, which needs to be cleared up. I see that often, uh, you know, sometimes an you know, intersphincter abscess and an anal fissure. There are two conditions which can mimic the symptoms. Uh, yeah, and, and so that can cause uh, a lot of confusion. So. Uh, so you need to get it checked with a uh, uh, you need to get it checked with a uh, uh, a doctor and that that will uh, or a specialist to see why it hasn't healed. So uh, so the question about left side ulcerative colitis, uh, yeah. So as I said, ulcerative left side ulcerative colitis is uh, uh, so left side of the colon. So you will need to stay on medication if you already have not medications do work. Five SA compounds. If that doesn't work, then uh, immunomodulator that doesn't work. Then you go on to uh, 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 biologicals. So if I say like Pentasa, Asacol, these are common things which are used. Uh, sometimes you can use uh, these uh, as enemas as well, which work very effectively. So medical treatment uh, is, you know, so you need to be work, worked under a medical gastroenterologist. So uh, because so a lot of people come to me with, you know, I, know I, I can treat them too, but I would rather we, we have a medical gastroenterologist working within our group. Uh, two, or two or three of them who we actively ask them to manage them so if, if because they treat it more often than we do and so if the medical management fails then then they come to surgery so uh, the question is walking aggravates fissure so it 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 can because if it's a it's if it's older where you particularly you know in, in where you're sitting or you know where the the butt the buttock moves it can cause aggravated so you need to have some treatments for it heal the fissure if, if it doesn't, then you may need surgery, but you know, uh, but walking as a, walking aggravates fissure. So if you don't walk, then, you know, we have all have to walk. So the question is, it may get, make it worse, but we have to have it treated. That's what the answer for that question is. Uh, so another few minutes, one or two more minutes, any other questions, please, uh, pop that in and all the questions, which I haven't answered, I will, uh, answer on the chat box a bit later. Uh, it's uh, thank you so much for all of you for joining in week on week because uh, it's important because it's nice to have a, a audience, small or big, it doesn't matter. As long as we engage, clear our questions, you can ask your friends to join in because, you know, it's, uh, or you can share the video uh, later, which I request you because they can watch it in a time when they're not uh, busy uh, or, or it may not be relevant to them now, but, you know, at least it creates the awareness so that they can advise their friends or, uh, you know, uh, our family later. So I would request to share the videos which are on the Facebook page, uh, like the page too, please. Uh, there is a link to the uh, YouTube channels, which we, all the videos are on so that you can go and click on them. 
so that what we're trying to do is to create content so which is all useful which is available to you so uh, you where uh, you know information so uh, is available on a very open basis so that uh, uh, you know w the the aim of these chats and live sessions and videos is to so that you if you're very well informed you can help others you know educate them so if you need to go see a doctor at least you can ask the right questions and i think that's very important to ask the right questions if you ask the right questions you will get the right hopefully get the right answers and get the right treatment so that is what uh, you know this uh, question answer center session okay there's one more question from uh, uh, cancer remission relapse after a ca colon treatment okay so congratulations mr shrinivasan padmanabhan uh, is 8 uh, years so the main risk after cancer colorectal cancer surgery is for 5 years that's when you screen after that your risk becomes same as uh as the general population so that's good news uh, but you may need uh you know colonoscopy uh, once in 5 years so you're saying you're having problems with fatigue and uh, neuropathy that's one of the things which happens with uh, uh chemotherapy for some people it's uh, it's uh, you know it stays on for a long time uh so then you know and that's a problem because it complicates then if you have diabetes and then that's another uh, hit because all these have a multiple effects so uh, yes we have great treatments for colorectal cancer but you know there are side effects to all these treatments uh, which uh, uh just a minute uh, so uh, i hopefully that i answer that uh, hi surya hi uh, thank you mr sanjeev pardan it's always good to see you uh, so we're almost done here thanks for listening in and uh, you know it's been a uh good to come back to you every week and hopefully we'll see you next week uh with another topic i will if, if there are any particular topics you want to suggest or we can have a live session like this answering questions because i am quite comfortable with that uh so he has not gone for any test for the last and so mr uh, shrinivas padmanabhan if uh, not that's okay but if you haven't got any symptoms that's okay uh, and and uh, but i would suggest that a colonoscopy every 5 years would uh, you know would hold you in good stead Uh, so hi ashok baskar you know the recurrence of bleeding hemorrhage you know, most simple procedure okay so there may be small hemorrhages are developing uh, maybe we need to uh, have a quick check to see uh, if that's the problem again so uh, you know get it assessed uh, by a friendly uh, colorectal surgeon yes uh, nitya varshini uh, crohn's can cause skip lesions can affect anywhere from the buccal mucosa and mucosa you right okay so we're done uh uh hi animesh uh, so good to see you all and see you again next week and try to get you know share this video with all your friends and family on your page uh and ask your friends to uh, and also like the page it helps to keep the momentum going and uh you know more people will access this information so uh yeah we are on facebook youtube Uh, linkedin and uh instagram so see you also next week bye bye